Racing is back! Kind of. NASCAR has been running events without crowds for a few weeks now. Same with the World of Outlaws. And Formula One is going to try it too. Hey guys, uh, I wrote and shot this episode a few weeks ago. We shoot all of our stuff in advance. And since then, a lot of really important things have happened in the world of racing, especially NASCAR. And I want to let you guys know that we didn't intentionally leave anything of that sort out because it is absolutely worth talking about. But instead of cramming it into this episode, uh, the Wheelhouse team and I wanted to give those events their due diligence and cover them in the way that they deserve to be covered. So without further ado, here's all the crazy stuff that went down in motorsports during quarantine. Enjoy. But as real racing returns, I don't want that to overshadow the astounding accomplishments of the sim racing community during quarantine. In our time of need, people from all over the country and the world, from basement amateurs to semi-pros to some of the biggest names in motorsports, left it all on the virtual track. While the cars might not have been real, the racing sure as hell was. And let me tell you, things got batch insane. Thanks to Dazzle Pro for sponsoring this week's episode. If you're like me, you probably haven't been to the dentist in a while, but you also live in fear of losing your teeth and having to drink all your meals. <sighs> it's a real fear of mine. I have nightmares where my teeth fall out of my mouth on a date and I can only drink milk and smoothies for the rest of my life. But thanks to Dazzle Pro's electric sonic toothbrush, I don't have to worry about either losing my teeth or going to the dentist. Not only does it keep my chompers healthy, but it comes with a UV light that sanitizes the toothbrush head, killing 99% of germs on the brush head. It's really nice to know that I have a clean toothbrush head every time I brush my teeth. Honestly, I adore my Dazzle Pro. I love this thing. It's affordable. I've never had a toothbrush this nice. I didn't really see the hype and electric toothbrushes until I used the Dazzle Pro. And I'm a believer, this thing is really cool and it's just a great way to start your day off right. To get your teeth as clean as mine, enter code DM62 at the link in the description for 50% off, 50% off guys. That's amazing. Support the companies that support donuts so we can keep making dope content and keep our teeth clean. Hashtag clean teeth gang. <laughs> All right, I gotta give you guys some background before we get into the nuttiness. The story begins on February 12th when the Formula One Chinese Grand Prix was officially canceled after the Shanghai Sports Bureau called off all sports in the city. However, the F1 season opener in Australia was still about a month away. The FIA considered implementing social distancing protocols for teams in attendance, which would be a monumental effort for an event as big as the Australian Grand Prix. After a few crew members on multiple teams showed symptoms of COVID-19, the organizers called it off on March 13th. There would be no racing that weekend. Over in the world of NASCAR, America's favorite oval racing series had been racing since February, but that was about to change. On Monday, March 16th, NASCAR postponed their season until May. Within one week, we went from expecting a great year of racing to nada. Zip. Nothing. But I want to be clear, I support the shit out of every sanctioning body's decision to postpone. Public health comes first in my book. But now, there's no racing. That sucks. Lucky for us though, some enterprising racers took matters into their own hands. Some of you might be familiar with a racing simulator called iRacing. The sim is so realistic that professional racers use it to practice in their own homes. To keep the competition serious, the developer charges a subscription fee to drive, and the sim has a pretty stringent ranking system that rewards good racecraft. It's not uncommon for unknown but skilled sim racers to be put in the same lobbies as big name pro drivers. I was once in the same lobby as French Formula One champion Jean Girard. But now thanks to quarantine and the efforts of some devoted sim racers, Joe's going up against pros would now become a regular occurrence. On March 13th, NASCAR Xfinity driver Ryan Vargas posted this tweet, quote, should I do a big hosted race on iRacing, get some drivers and fans involved and find a way to have someone stream it? I feel like we all need something to pick our spirits up. Ryan's tweet went super viral on NASCAR Twitter, getting retweets from drivers like Justin Algaer. NASCAR fans were stoked. On on the 19th, E-Truck Night in America, powered by Filter Time, was streamed on Twitch. Thousands of people tuned in to see the race, myself included. Some pro drivers were in the race, as well as veteran sim racers like four-time E-NASCAR iRacing champion Ray Alfala. 
The grassroots scene had come together to give racing fans their sport when it was no longer possible. And I think Ryan's race inspired NASCAR themselves to dip their little toesies into the world of sim racing. NASCAR, iRacing, and Fox Sports teamed up to air the first ever sim race on March 22nd. The venue would be a virtual version of Homestead Miami, which was the race that was supposed to be happening that weekend. The eNASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Dixie Vodka 150, that's a mouthful, was a who's who of NASCAR, including big name drivers. You had Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, Bubba Wallace. They even got guys to come out of retirement for this race. They had freaking Dale Jr. and NASCAR Racing 3 cover driver Bobby Labonte up in this This was shaping up to be the most epic race, maybe of all time. Uh, what we got though was kind of a show, but in a fun way. Here's the thing about sim racing or any online racing game. It has a problem that any gamer probably knows. Because you aren't putting your body or a real car on the line, the stakes just aren't there. And this was made readily apparent to everyone that watched this race. Every five or so laps, someone would crash out, which brought out the caution flag, only for the same thing to happen a few laps later. And because everyone got two resets, meaning if they crashed, they would just get a whole new car, the drivers didn't feel that incentivized to drive cautiously, which only led to more wrecks. It was a total meme fest, one that went almost an hour over schedule until a higher up at Fox Sports told the organizers, hey, no more yellow flags because we have a dang horse race to broadcast and no one is gonna get in the way of my buff horses who are immune to COVID for some reason. Denny Hamlin ended up winning that race and the organizers hopefully learned some lessons about giving drivers too many resets. Despite the hiccups though, it was very entertaining to watch, at least for me, but more importantly, it was a big milestone for e-racing. That same weekend, Formula One held its own virtual Bahrain Grand Prix. I remember this race pretty well because uh, I didn't watch the official stream. I was on board with McLaren driver Lando Norris on his Twitch channel. Now, I already liked Lando before all this, but he really Really came into his own during quarantine. He is a natural when it comes to streaming, and this race proved it. Trouble started when Lando was disconnected from the server. While Lando was figuring out how to get back into the race, his avatar was still driving and holding off the competition. When Lando was finally able to get back into the race, his computer driver, which chat named LandoBot, had held on to the third place position, and Lando took it from there. Unfortunately, he was crashed out on the final turn by fellow streamer Jimmy Broadbent, which was honestly pretty funny. But as much as it sucks to get crashed out like that, I think the incident really captured the beauty of the situation. One of my favorite sim drivers in Jimmy Broadbent got to have an unforgettable moment with a rising star of Formula One. Jimmy! The races I've talked about really show how the motorsports world made the best of the situation. But with the good, there has to be the bad. Like most things in life, the quarantine sim racing scene started to get a little less enjoyable to watch when money got involved. On April 5th, NASCAR went to virtual Bristol, and as to be expected, there was a very early caution on the very first lap. Racing resumed on lap six, and in car number 43, Bubba Wallace quickly found himself in a back and forth with Clint Boyer. Now, what happens next? I don't wanna point fingers, so I'll just show you. You see Boyer running the bottom, comes up. Boyer, I don't know, you might want to watch the replay because it looked to me like he came up on Bubba. You gotta rewind, <laughs> that was on purpose. But that's not the part of the story that gets the attention. Instead of staying in the race, Bubba said this. Come on, Clint! Oh. God! Yep, he just came up and wrecked the hell out of you again right. on purpose. Y'all have a good one. Then quit. Keep in mind, he did have one quick repair left. Well, this didn't make his sponsor, Blue Emu, very happy. With the quickness, Blue Emu took to Twitter and accused Bubba of being a quitter and renounced their sponsorship. This caused quite the brouhaha in online NASCAR communities like Twitter and the NASCAR subreddit. Some people agreed with Blue Emu, calling Bubba a hothead. Others suggested that Blue Emu's rants were all about raising publicity for the company. But I think we can all agree this was maybe blown out of proportion just a little bit, right? Right? Whatever the case, it certainly illustrated that maybe the sponsors were taking the racing more seriously than the guys doing it because the sponsors had actual money in the game and that was sure to cause some strife at some point. But as it turns out, we wouldn't even have to wait one week for the biggest and most justifiable controversy of the whole story. On April 12th, iRacing was hosting a race called Monza Madness. It's an oval race at the vintage Monza Oval with current stock cars. It sounds pretty awesome. This race was cool because it didn't just have NASCAR guys, but drivers from lots of other disciplines. And unlike the last couple of oval races I've talked about, this one wasn't being broadcast on TV. 
I don't really know how to preface this, so I'll just say it. During the qualifying session, driver Kyle Larson thought that he was having problems with his voice chat. So instead of making sure by just testing the mic a few more times, the guy just dropped a racist slur. You can't hear me? Hey, Pretty much immediately, people were calling for Larson to get punished, rightfully so. NASCAR suspended Larson, mandating that he attend sensitivity training. His sponsors, McDonald's and Credit One Bank, they dropped him, and he was fired by his team, Chip Ganassi Racing. You've probably already heard about this incident because it got nationwide coverage. I don't think there's much more I can say on it, other than that I agree with everyone's decisions to cut ties with Larson, and that that word shouldn't have a place in anyone's vocabulary. Like seriously, what the f dude? Moving on to America's other big time oval racing series, IndyCar. Quarantine had a hugely adverse effect on the Indy 500, which basically takes over Indianapolis for a few weeks during the spring. Obviously, that didn't happen this year. Instead, IndyCar hosted the iRacing IndyCar Challenge at where else but the virtual Indianapolis Motor Speedway in iRacing. With eight laps to go in the race, a three-way battle for the lead is being fought between IndyCar drivers Simon Pagano, Graham Rahal, and F1 young gun Lando Norris. Rahal and Pagano come out of turn one with Rahal on the inside, but at the last second, here comes Lando throwing down a clean pass below Rahal right above the curtain as all three of them enter turn two. Something happens and Rahal gives Lando a little bit of room but bumps Pagano, which sends Simon into the wall. He is understandably upset and blames the young McLaren driver seemingly in real time. Oh, Norris, really? Oh man, wow Lando, wow, nice. As Lando continues on, Pagano can be heard very clearly hatching a plan from the pit lane. Let me take Lando out, let's do it. Hmm, that doesn't sound very sportsmanlike. Maybe he was joking. At this point, Lando has lapped Pagano and is behind him as both drivers exit turn four. What happens next will shock you. Oh, I was spinning. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do Pagano slows down to pit right in the middle of turn four's exit. Obviously, people were very upset with Mr. Pagano, myself included. I mean, this guy, he's an indie champion. This is not the sort of behavior you want to see from someone like that. Perhaps most disappointed, though, was Lando, who was certainly on track to win the race. I had no intention in taking me out, so, you know, just wanted to slow me down that little bit by letting off in the middle of the corner and breaking right in front of me, so yeah. Oh, come on, Lando, you're gonna make me cry, man. You just feel so bad for him. And somehow, this isn't even the scummiest thing that happened that day. On the final lap, Aero McLaren SP driver Oliver Eskew was blazing down the front stretch with Santino Ferrucci close behind. It was sure to be a photo finish, as it looked like Ferrucci actually had enough speed to pass Eskew at the very last second. Instead, this happens. Watch Ferrucci on Askew. Just massive wreck. After the race, he said, quote, I've been running a lot of different series lately and I was trying to get on his door because of the NASCAR style and I got a little too close and I think I turned just a touch too aggressive and that's my fault. Which honestly, I think sounds plausible. But if you watch the onboard footage, it really looks like he threw the wheel into Askew. So I'm not so sure. The Indy 500 incident was kind of the climax of this year's quarantine racing season. It was just an unbelievable blowout with multiple storylines. It couldn't get any more ridiculous. It was truly nutty. Things kind of calmed down for a while until May 23rd. Formula E was holding the fifth round of the Race at Home series where their drivers raced at home on their computer at home. Audi driver Daniel Abt took an early and dominant lead, which was surprising since a few weeks earlier he had struggled to adapt to the feel of sim racing. He wasn't able to hold on to his lead, but he did score a third place finish. Not bad, Daniel. However, some people were a little suspicious of Daniel's good performance for a couple of reasons. Number one, his good performance, and number two, the fact that his face was obscured on webcam by a poorly placed microphone stand. Hmm. Formula E driver and Waffle spokesman Stoffel Van Dorn immediately suspected trickery in a post-race interview and was backed up by two-time FE champ Jean-Éric Verne. Turns out their suspicions were correct. 
Daniel Abt was not the guy seen on webcam, but a professional sim driver. He used a ringer. Once found out, Formula E fined Daniel 10,000 euros, which he donated to charity, and then Audi fired him. It took him out of the sport he had been a part of since its beginning in 2014. Look, quarantine has driven me a little crazy. I get it. Look at my hair. Look at my eyes. I've been by myself for 12 weeks, but I haven't thought of anything as harebrained. Daniel explained on video that he was filming the stunt as a prank on the field, and he honestly genuinely seemed sorry about the whole thing. Frankly, it does seem like a kooky plan gone wrong on Daniel's part, but there is so much time and money invested in these races that I understand why they punished him like they did. Throughout May, real racing made its way back. The first high-profile series was the World of Outlaws Sprint Car Racing in Knoxville on May 8th, no crowds. Then NASCAR returned on May 17th to no crowds and teams observing social distancing. IndyCar returned on June 6th at Texas Motor Speedway. And Formula One is due back July 4th weekend in Austria. As the real racing returns this summer, it makes me wonder how we'll look at this strange time in motorsports. Some people will obviously prefer to forget. Some really dumb stuff went down because it was just a game. And I really don't think that's the right attitude. Since there was no real racing to watch, the sim racing that was just a game was the only show in town. And I know I'm not the only one who wanted to see some seriously good racing. And there was. But I guess what kind of rubbed me the wrong way was seeing some racers not take it very seriously when there are tons of dedicated sim racers out there who would have jumped at the opportunity to race on live TV and show off their skills. But that allows us to look at the positive stuff with more appreciation. We got to see a grassroots movement of organizers come together and put on a show from their living room to ours. They were no longer shielded by PR people or sponsor obligations. I sincerely hope that going forward, race teams and sanctioning bodies learn from this and let their drivers be themselves. Like I knew Lando and Charles Leclerc were good, but now I see that they're really cool dudes too. Personality is just as, if not more important than skill when it comes to building a fandom and it just gives me a better appreciation for the community around the sport that I already love so much. And that's what's really cool. Hey, if you want more NASCAR content, check out this up to speed on Mr. Richard Petty, AKA The King. It's an old one, but a good one. Or for something completely different, check out this episode of Money Pit. It's my favorite show. Zach Job is a very handsome man. Follow us on all social media at Donut Media. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Nolan J. Sykes. Be kind. See you next time. Love all you guys.